I'm Tom Glassman. Welcome to Learning How to See. This is where we look at a few images and examine some basic techniques that anyone can use right away to start taking better photographs, regardless of the camera you use or your skill level. If you like what you're seeing, please consider subscribing for more tips. Also, liking doesn't hurt either. Hi guys, welcome back. This is, um, well, we're still trying to think up the title for this thing. Uh, we've been batting it around and uh, let's call it, we're waiting or waiting or in between shots. Now we did an earlier thing called patience where it's, what it means is when you're sitting there waiting for the shot, you have to have patience for the right conditions to happen. The waiting in this instance refers to if you're out taking pictures and let's say you've taken the world's greatest shot and in between the time you get to the next world's greatest shot you stumble across something that's eh but let's try it anyway so you're in between stuff you're sort of waiting for the next great shot to happen but you don't want to pass up what's there in front of you and one of the reasons to take these kinds of shots is that even though they may not amount to much and, and you'll see these are just sort of average but you can still learn from them you can still apply the basics and fundamentals for good composition, for good exposure. If you've got tricky lighting, you can just see what happens. And then when you get back to it later, uh, you can see if it works, if it doesn't. Regardless, it's something you can learn from. And some of these things later on might make a nice collection of images for an essay. And I'll explain that a little bit more later on. But let me take this first example here. This was taken in New Orleans in Storyland, and you have this very decorative, colorful pirate ship here. And it was the bright colors that drew me to it. Again, I sort of used a polarizer because the sun was hitting it. It made it bright, but with the sun hitting it, there was a lot of reflection. So the polarizer cut the reflection, saturated the colors, and I moved myself so I wanted the camera cutting this off because you didn't want a lot of trees and, and forest off to the right. It doesn't add anything to the picture. I sort of cut it off at the top. I included the skull and crossbones. And I sort of cut it off here at the bottom because you could see the bottom part of the ship, the cannon. And I moved because over here you have this sculpture of a sort of middle-aged housewife in this uh, unbelievable tatty print shift botanical dress holding this bizarre little creature in her lap and and why don't I blow that up for a minute just to show you what's going on here so um, you know the idea was I didn't I stood so this wasn't cutting off any of this and she becomes part of the image if you look at it so again in terms of composition Nothing extraneous off to the right, off to the left. Uh, the woman's there. She's on the bench. I left, left enough to the left of her to indicate that. And again, it's just making sure the whole image works. Not a great image. Uh, it's never going to be end up in a show. But I'm still practicing what makes for good composition. And uh, it's just a fun thing to have. This next image is... Um, it's in the fall, it's some Aspen. And again, my background's from New England, I'm back East and you get these great fall colors and they're so amazing. You don't even have to take the lens cap off the front of the camera. In fact, you don't even have to take the camera out of the camera bag. Out here in the Pacific Northwest, you don't have that plethora of color. So here I am at this bunch of Aspen. There's not much to right or left. It's kind of boring. And so what I did, I stopped it way down. I wanted a long exposure and I moved the camera up and just made sort of a um, abstract out of what's going on there. So again, you'll notice for composition, I don't have anything going on to the left or right that doesn't add to it. You can see a little bit of blue sky in there, not that clear. And it's just taking the camera during a long exposure and moving it slowly up. I'm on a tripod so I could handle that. But that's what's going on there. This is a case where, again, 
you're in between great shots, here's a so-show shot, and you're just trying something to see what you can make happen out of it. In the same vein, this was taken in Yellowstone. Uh, they were doing some work on the road, so there's like a half hour delay, all the cars were backed up. And I got out, turned the camera on the Aspens, which were backlit, and did a double exposure in the camera. It's just a way to kill time. There was just a bunch of forest and leaves and trees, you know, nothing great. But again, I tried to make something happen and see what I could do in the camera and, and come away with something fun. So that's what's going on here. Again, this is a case where I was shooting some Aspen and not a lot of color, not much going on to the left or right. So this is an in-camera double exposure. And all I did was I took this sort of image here, then moved the camera to the right a little bit and sort of took a little bit more of the same image overlapping the other image. It just makes for a nice ethereal sort of what have you. And again, it's it's not a killer image, but it's um, it, it's in between great shots. And, you know, you're just trying to see what you can make happen out there. This was in Montana. Uh, it was obviously a taxidermy shop. Uh, it was outside. You can see the blue sky up here and in here. And I'm a big fan of words and graphics. And it was sort of out in the forest with real bushes and trees in front that sort of blend into the uh, image there. And it was just sort of a fun thing to do where I couldn't move back any further uh, because of what was behind me. So that's why the T and the Y are a little bit cropped. But I had to lean back as far as I could because the sides of the building were there. They were sort of unattractive. But I left enough of the Y and the T so it still reads. And you come away with what's really going on there. Uh, if it just said Axiderm, it wouldn't mean much. So the point is, uh, you know what's going on. But when the picture's taken and if it gets framed, no one else is. It's just, it was there and you just can't let it go. So you have to take the shot. And while you're doing it, practice rules of composition. This was at the um, county fair. Uh, it's, I'm sure you all recognize it. It's a typical alien uh, from our part of the galaxy. This says Roswell or Bust. He's hitchhiking, I guess it's a he. The theory here is at a state fair, county fair, there's a lot going on. Oddly enough, there's so much competitive clutter and detritus and debris that you can't come away with a lot of good shots. A lot of times this fair art, the paintings are, are wonderful, but they're chipped, they're peeling. Uh, and in this case, I had to come back and do the shot because earlier there was a shadow coming right across here where half of them was lit nicely and the other half was washed out. So this is a case where you're walking around the county fair. You can't take shots of the cotton candy, as fun as it is, with a Ferris wheel behind it because there's all the shots for the, or the image of the prices and stuff in front. So here what you want to do is uh, just move in close and you take a bunch of these little aliens or images painted on the rides and at the end of a couple of years, you're going to have a folder of all this great bizarre art that you could do an exhibit out of uh, or just make reading cards out of your alien collection. The point is, uh, they're great shots to have. And so go for it. This was back in New Orleans. This is in Jackson Square. It's a shot of Andrew Jackson. New Orleans is an amazing place. Uh, the architecture, the people, it's everything. And here I was taking a breather from that overload of, you know, visual superabundance. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at this statue and everyone is shooting it. And usually in the background, there's there's trees or the Jackson Square Cathedral, a lot of stuff that's competing with it. What I did in this case, I was sitting down and I made myself get up. I walked around until the sun was right 
right into the camera lens. The, the sun was behind this. So I knew when I did evaluative or matrix metering, the sun or the camera would look at all this light and say, that's so bright, I have to make it darker and would throw this into a silhouette or shadow. So I had this great shadow of Andrew Jackson on the horse and I didn't come down any lower because uh, two reasons. One, you start to get people and everything in the background, which you don't need. Two, you don't need much more than the horse's head and cutting it off right here to let people know it's sort of a statue. Adding a lot of horse going out to the right doesn't add anything to that. The other thing is that um, this particular style of silhouette portraiture was very famous in the 17, 1800s, so it's mimicking that. And while I got a couple shots, a bird landed on the uh, hat right up there. And I waited until the bird turned around because when it's looking at you, you can't tell what this is. When the bird turns to the side, you can see the beak and the feathers. And suddenly it adds another nice dimension to a shot I took that, you know, it's in between other shots, but that's what's going on there. The takeaway from all this, guys, is that uh, you're always looking for stuff. So this is New Orleans. Um, New Orleans has lanterns everywhere, gas lanterns, electric things, and they're just amazing. And so you're out there taking one amazing shot after another, and you see these lanterns. And again, I took this one just because of the background uh painting and swirls and lines. Here's the shadow of this lantern with all this going on. And, you know, I just sort of cropped it here. There's a little bit of shadow here. I didn't crop the bottom of that. I wanted that. You've got different colors going on. It's, I'd say it's amazingly mediocre, but I have a whole collection of lantern shots from New Orleans. And so here's another one I did. Um, not particularly wonderful, but they become storytelling images. In between your great shots, you take shots of where you're visiting. Uh, this says New Orleans, especially when it's in context with six or eight or 12 other lantern shots in your little photo book or slideshow. And in this case, um, I wanted to frame it almost like this uh, in this shuttered thing of a area of a building a uh, little bit of the stonework around it and it's just paying attention to composition and making sure the lantern sits out in the same vein here is another uh this is actually kind of interesting and i'm quite sort of forget what's going on here these are bars are great and you're looking through where a lantern is being shown on this orange wall behind so this is this is one dimension here and what's going on in here is is back maybe about 10 12 feet and i sort of like the orange doorknob or lock painted lock there matching the color here the trim is going on here notice that things are sort of upright and perpendicular and it just you know again it's an okay shot but it's interesting and it fits in with everything else i was doing at the time this one I think you might have seen before. Uh, I was shooting some snow out in the fields, and this was a case where these two horses, I call this my uh, Rorschach horse, uh, but the two horses were standing next to each other. And again, you use your matrix metering because this is the camera's going to expose for all this and throw these guys into shadow. The horses were constantly moving and they were making that pattern maybe every few minutes so i was sort of waiting for it but this was in between shots when i was outside taking sort of winter wonderland shots and this was going on so i hung out and got this one as well in the animal vein a uh, barbecue place up in washington near seattle and i'm coming out getting in the car and i look up and there are these sort of cats on the roof I'm thinking cat on a hot tin roof. I don't know whether the roof was tin or not, but you had this gorgeous sort of iconic uh, air vent up there. It looked very 1930s, looked like a Sylvester cat. It looked like your uh, 
Ashcan school of painting, uh, where they, Edward Hopper or Glackham's or Prendergrass, where they're doing urban blight and decay in, in New York and Philadelphia. And uh, you, it's just bizarre. So I had to take it. In the animal vein, here we have this quilt with uh, dogs. I call this Lassie Wannabe. Here's this little dog. And I had to wait till the dog turned its head. So I was looking at the quilt, looking at maybe a Rin Tin Tin type and a Lassie. And uh, just looking adoringly at his heroes. I'm sure he's not projecting and knows who they are. But the point is that a quilt by itself doesn't make a great shot. A dog looking away, not at the quilt, doesn't make a great shot. But a little dog like that, maybe looking at the quilt that's full of dogs, makes an interesting shot. So going on there. More New Orleans. Uh, the dog is not allowed in the bar. So he's right at the edge where you have this alligator here and, and everyone inside eating gumbo and, and what have you. Uh, maybe tossing back a Sazerac. But uh, again, you have the dog waiting there patiently. And if it were other places, it wouldn't mean much. But right here at the edge with the alligator, it looks a little silly. Worth a shot. My goodness, here's another dog. This is in Santa Fe. I guess you could call this the Foo Foo West. You uh, don't see a French poodle very often with uh, cowboy boots here. In the future, I would have spot metered off the poodle, may maybe made him a bit lighter or used a flash to lighten it up. Uh, but the point is, uh, a dog with cowboy boots, uh, you don't think of, you don't see that a lot in the old westerns. And last one, um, this is actually a um, staircase in a hotel in Rome, Italy. Uh, and I was out roaming the backs, just looking for anything, some architectural elements. And I had shot this the night before. And it really didn't work because there's a skylight directly above this. And it was pretty dark. And I happened to check it again in the morning. And here the light was coming down. They had the lights on and you got this nice effect. So I sort of used the camera to sort of crop it here. And I didn't want, you don't want too much going off to the right because it's boring and doesn't add much. All this is sort of interesting here. And this is a case where it's in between shots of the Coliseum and the Appian Way or what have you. And this is just killing time before you head out for breakfast and what have you. Uh, but it's always looking. And again, remember I said I tried it the night before. I came back and tried it again. So uh, you're always wait for good light. You never know. You'll always be surprised. So the moral of the lesson today is um, keep looking all the time. I keep saying this. Uh, it still applies. Have fun. Uh, look up. In this case, look down and keep checking it out. And uh, above all, have fun. Anyway, that's it, guys. See you. Take care. Since I've started doing this series, I've also started watching a lot of YouTube videos just to get some ideas. And I suddenly realized how really, really important it is for people to like and subscribe. So if you can, please do it. It would really help. Also, if you have ideas, send us comments. Let us know what we should be talking about addressing. We'll show up in the videos. We can also email you some stuff. With that out of the way, thanks for watching, thanks for your patience, and we'll see you next episode.